let thy will prevail this is one of the most important in christianity it is called a statement for me it is an understanding you know when international singers go for a concert there is a request for many songs and it is not possible for them to sing all the songs that have been requested so what they do they sing a medley of songs a line or two of various songs woven as a medley so this is a spiritual medley where the unanswered questions unasked questions of many talks are woven into one message existence fulfills its plans or god or whole fulfills its plan through you and i what is the plan of the existence the plan of the existence is for the transformation of human consciousness and in that it fulfills its plan through you and i someone is given a pain the other is given a happiness it is like a director giving different roles to different artists for the entertainment of all those who come to that particular show or particular project we go on asking god to give me this give me that give keep on begging but it does not happen that way if whatever you are asking falls in plan with the divine or the plan of the existence it is fulfilled otherwise not masters are the one who are in harmony with that it is like you have to organize a function at your home many things have to be put in place you give responsibilities to different people and if someone is not able to fulfill that responsibility and you see the time is closing nearer you take that responsibility from that person and give it to the other this happens i had spoken on misery suffering and disease and death misery suffering and disease come in one category and death in another if misery disease and sickness is bad why does it come to a master who is in total harmony with the existence in mayor of castlebridge thomas hardy writes as a soliloquy there is a clergyman who speaks why do miseries and misfortunes come to a clergy as a soliloquy the answer comes simply to enhance the favors of almighty as i said existence fulfills its plan through you and i through millions of your and my hands when the master sees something it is the plan of the divine it accepts disease can come to you in two ways sometimes diseases come to you as a part of your unconsciousness there is your immune system is very weak and there is virus in the atmosphere you will capture that if your immune system is strong enough immune system in spiritual terms will refer to awareness if you are aware that means your immune system is good you will not attract that disease to you but sometimes master take this upon themselves that is called magnetic effect in order to help the existence in its plan i remembered my grandmother sufi shakuntala devi she used to have the problem of asthma 
so every morning after taking a bath she will take a cup of tea hot tea and that used to help her one day i ask how did you get this ailment so these were my intimate talks with her she said one day her sister in law brother's wife she had been suffering from asthma and one day it happened she had a very hard cough and she was not getting relieved so this sufi master shakuntala my grandmother was sitting and she leaned and her sister in law leaned on to her chest with her back so she said are you getting relief asked inquired her are you getting relief like this she said when i sit down like this leaning on your chest i feel relieved she said okay you will feel better now only this much she said she attracted the disease into her as a part of the divine scheme masters so what happened there did she suffer no because there was awareness in her she is assisting her bill a bit it is if i give you a responsibility when we used to have a cooking class many things are required to finish the particular dish so we have dedicated the responsibility to different people some are not able to fulfill that so the most competent one we used to ask can you do this sometimes there is a sign of why me because you are the most beloved one most capable one you are assisting me in fulfilling the plan and that time if you accept it willingly joyfully with full awareness that is how you are helping in the divine plan masters do that and in that there is no suffering there is a tremendous joy that i am helping the beloved in fulfilling his plan and that is how it goes on and then there is no suffering when a master encounters any disease it is what he attracts when i got the problem with my feet the first thing came to my mind you have used your feet for too long now use my feet walk with thousands of my feet you don't need the feet so much so to continue my work you need something else there is no yes there is a slight discomfort because when a disease or something like that has descended at the physical plane it will have its effect when you agree when you are asked can you fulfill this finish this job because this particular person is not able to do that and you accept it there is a joy and there is a great learning in that also i give one example of swami ramkrishna paramahansa he had liked a particular he was very fond of food meditation session is going on he will rush to the kitchen and ask inquire from sharda sharda what did you cook sometimes she used to feel embarrassed and she used to call him ramkrishna dev dev you don't feel embarrassed if your disciples are there and you rush to the kitchen you are inquiring what it is you cannot keep away from food at that time he responded and his response was that of a master meditate over it introspect he said i have nothing to hold me on to this show the boat is ready to sail there is no anchor when boat has to stay on the shore the boatman releases the anchor the moorings and that 
keeps the boat on to the shore until it is ready to sail back. He said, I do not have anything to hold me to stay on to this shore. The moment the flower is blossomed, it's, it has attained all that it needs to attain. What is the destiny of a bud? What is the destiny of a seed? To blossom into a flower. And when it has blossomed into the flower, means it is ready to leave millions of seeds again. So it has fulfilled its destiny. If the flower was picked up from the tree and offered somewhere, then it cannot leave the seeds. It has to remain on the tree, dry, fall its petals, and the pollen will become the seeds. So he said, I have food is the only thing. I looked around what I can create as a mooring, as something to hold me onto the onto this show. So food is the only thing that I have found and I have created as a mooring for me to stay on to this shore. The day I turned my face from the food, three days after that I will be no more. Sharda thought that this is one of Ram Krishna's excuses, but he was an aware master, aware even in his unawareness, aware in his sleep even. It happened Ram Krishna got throat cancer. He could not eat. He was very weak. One day, Vivekananda, who was helping him, who was his chief disciple, he was taking care of all the spit that used to come out. He will go and dispose it off and all that. There are two incidents in this. He was feeling so much of pain, Ram Krishna. Vivekananda, that one day he asked the master, he said, Master, I cannot see your pain. Why you don't ask the mother to cure you of this ailment, at least for our sakes? He said, if you say so, I will ask the mother. He closed his eyes and then he opened. He said, I asked my mother, ask the mother. The mother said, you have used your voice for too long. Now you speak through the voice of others. Now you speak through the voice of others. You have used your throat, your vocal cord for too long. You have eaten enough. Now you eat through others. So he said, when you speak, it is I am who is speaking. When you eat, it is I who is eating. Then Vivekanan used to remove the spit that was collected in a small container and dispose it off. So one day some of the other disciples, he said, Vivekanan, you should not do this because the spit of Ramakrishna is very contagious. It could affect you and you are the main chief disciple. You have to carry on the responsibility. Vivekananda got into an ecstasy hall, a Sufi state of awareness. And he drank that spit and he said, let me see how does it affect me. The divine plan was different. Vivekananda had to continue the responsibility and it did not affect him. So when a master gets sick, it is he who is helping in the fulfillment of the plan of the existence of God through you and he completely understands. He is an embodiment of let thy will prevail. It is not a mere statement for him. It is not a mere assertion. Instead, it is a realization, an awareness, an understanding. 
why does one feels humiliated and guilty firstly you have to understand there is nothing like na humiliation in existence humiliation is only a psychological aspect they are created by you the man existence knows nothing of humiliation because existence has no ego have you ever seen trees feeling humiliated have you ever seen a rock feeling humiliated Have you seen anybody except man feeling humiliated watch the nature and you will be surprised if two dogs are fighting they do not start fighting they do not start fight like human beings they are not so foolish as man is they first show to each other how much i am they bark they jump they show their chests and their teeth too they simply do this to show i am what are you you show and the other shows and then it is decided because they are not foolish there is no need to fight then it is decided who is stronger and who is weaker then the one who is weaker shows his back puts his tail between the legs and goes away from the scene does it not happen but there is no fight but there is no humiliation either remember if you think that the one who is going away with his tail between his legs is humiliated you are wrong you can think that way because you feel humiliated you are bringing your human mind in it it is a simple decision if i ask you which is bigger of the two trees and you say if i ask you which is bigger two or three you will say definitely three is bigger than two by saying so does two feel humiliated it is foolish just foolish they are wise people these dogs they have decided without any violence without any conflict just a mock fight takes place and they have decided what is the point in going what is the point of going into real fight when it can be decided which one is weak of course the stronger will win why to go into the fight one who has left the field is not a coward remember he exposed his whole heart put everything on the table was not hiding any card not even a trump card seeing that the other has all the great cards and he does not it is finished there is no need to continue the fight and there is no need to feel humiliated god has made him a bigger dog and made me a smaller dog so it is finished a man came to a sufi master and asked why am i not like you and the master said you puzzle me i can ask the same thing why am i not like you and become very humiliated i am not like you either god made god makes two persons never alike you are you and i am i a man came to a zen master and asked the same thing why are you so pious so beautiful so grateful why am i not like you and the master said come outside and he took him outside and showed him two trees two trees standing side by side in his garden one was a big tree whispering to the clouds 
taller you are, you begin to whisper to the clouds. And another was small. He said, look, one is big and the other is small. But I have never seen the smaller one asking the bigger one, why am I not like you? And I have lived here for many years. There is no problem. The big is big, the small is small. The small is happy in being small and the big is happy in being big. There is no comparison, there is no humiliation. Humiliation starts only when you are egoistic and then the problem arises. And that is how the human beings create ego and that's how the human beings are. It is ego that feels humiliation, it is not the existence. Existence has no humiliation. The bigger the ego you have, more humiliated you will feel. And remember, the reason is your ego. Existence is completely unaware of any kind of humiliation. The rose is not humiliated before a lotus because lotus is so big. And the marigold is not humiliated before the rose because rose has beautiful fragrance. And it is being used for many important occasions but not marigold. Nobody is comparing. Nobody has any ego to compare. It is the ego that compares. Nobody is competing. Existence is pure silence as far as comparison is concerned. It is our psychological cancer, the ego which feels humiliated. Just remember, humiliation arises out of our psychological cancer, the ego. Second thing, you say one should not feel guilty, but how is it possible to avoid it? Slightest negative emotion or quality, if turned inwards, kills oneself. If it turns outward, kills others. There is no need to turn it anywhere, in or out. You can simply watch it and it disappears and evaporates. It goes neither in nor out. For example, anger is rising in you. It is a negative poison. Now there are three possibilities of response. But usually we mention of only two possibilities. Many people know only two. One is to throw this anger, this fire and poison onto the other. Then it is destructive. And naturally after you have burned the other, wounded the other, you will feel guilty. I can understand. You feel, you will feel foolish. You feel stupid. You will feel that you have done something wrong. You should have not done this, but this happens only afterwards. The other possibility is that you do not throw the anger on the other. Instead, you turn inwards. Then you hurt yourself. Then you wound yourself. Then you will have stomach ulcers. Then this fire will rage inside you and you will always be sitting on top of a wall can. You will never be at ease, always restless. The joy will disappear from life. The society, the church, the state is in favor of the second. The society says do not be angry with the other. Whatsoever you want to do, do it, swallow it, but do not get angry with the other. If you suffer from ulcers, that is your business. If you suffer from cancer, that is your business. And the society has given you explanation such that cancer will not be connected at all with your anger. So is the case with ulcers. If you swallow anger today, 
ulcers won't appear just today they will take years to come maybe 40 years of swallowing the anger the ulcer will appear and after 60 years of swallowing the anger cancer may appear so you will not be able to relate anger with cancer you will not be able to find any reason to show that it is anger that has created cancer in you that seems to be far fetched the society has decided that you should just behave rightly the society protects the other because society consists of the other society says that you can be self destructive that is your business it is against murder but it is not against suicide it is suicide if you turn your negative emotions inwards but i am against both because both will create guilt and will create complexities what is the approach then my approach is that if anger is there watch witness that anger is there do nothing about it there is no need to do anything just look at it and you will be surprised that just by looking at it it starts disappearing the cloud sooner or later disappears is gone and when the cloud is gone you have not done anything about it neither throwing it out nor throwing it in you will not feel any guilt anymore and this is how one should relate to all kinds of negative emotions i just took the example of anger but there are many negative emotions be a witness just watch it sufis call this at sahada be a witness hindus call it sakshin be a witness just watch every system every path has given the importance to witnessing but they call it by different names because the inner development relates to bringing a transformation in you the terminologies may differ but the essence remains the same buddhas call it witnessing hindus call it sakshin sakshi means you are a witness sahada is the word that is used by sufis if you do nothing about it something is going to be wrong because you will be doing under you will be doing under its impact if you do it to others it will be wrong if you do it to yourself again it will be wrong anything done under the impact of a negative emotion is going to be wrong and destructive and later on guilt will be there but there is a way not to do be a watcher be a witness see it it is there you are not it you are the seer sit silently when you are angry when you are jealous when you are full of hatred close your doors sit silently let the anger be there let anger flash in front of you let hatred move like a movie and you be a watcher and you will be surprised it cannot be there forever just as anger is something now or never if you just try to postpone your anger for a minute you can never be angry do this experiment someone says yes i am feeling angry but i will show my anger in a minute or so let me just attend to this phone call and after that i'll get angry with you and when it is gone it is gone it leaves no trace behind no guilt is created guilt is the trace that anger leaves behind and a man who does not create guilt is religious not that one who goes to the church 
one who recites the scriptures. I call a man who does not create any kind of guilt is the religious person. And this is the way of being the witness and trying to overcome different emotions.